Marcus. Hello, I'm Jimmy. And we're from Falls and you're watching Mosh Cam. The, be the best live experience I can remember is Reading Festival like two years ago. And there was like, it was just a maelstrom of people and it, we, it felt like we were basically being possessed by the devil. I don't really remember the show, but I remember like after the show and before the show. And we climbed up rigging and jumped into the crowd. Jimmy tried to run into the crowd to find a friend um, and then ended up pretty much getting split in two. Yeah, I had a whole plan like, because he didn't have a backstage pass that he would crowd surf at this one bit over the barrier and I'd grab him and put him on stage. But um, the bit I chose was the only bit in the set where it's just me playing. So it was a bit stupid. I had to like <laughs> drop my guitar so it was just total silence. And then I ran and got <clears throat> accosted by security. Watching it from the stage was just like seeing like an ant getting swallowed by. I got him, but then security got us because there's such a big gap between the crowd and the stage. I didn't really plan it out that well. And he lost both of his shoes and got kicked out, so. Uh, I played one in Vancouver that was pretty <laughs> off, off, the, off the rails. Yeah, we don't really know what happened. I think we'd either been touring for a really long time or we hadn't toured for ages. It was either the start or the, I think it was at the end of a, a US tour and we'd been playing like a lot of shows and we'd, and we'd gone a pretty like gonzo and um, again, it was just one of those shows where like something feels like it's controlling us that's bigger than us and it's not really, it's not ourselves on stage anymore and it ended up with um, a letter of complaint stroke warning being sent out to all the promoters down the west coast after that show. So the people, the managers of the club in Vancouver wrote a letter and every show we arrived at for the next 10 days had been like warned and then we had like, we, we would, we'd get sit, like sat down by certain promoters or by our tour manager and we're like, we were getting, we basically got scolded um, before having even done anything at the next few shows. Apparently we kicked, we were like kicking security guards um, or a security guard in the head from the stage. We were spitting at each other. Um, Jimmy you, puked. You were just throwing everything you could into the crowd. Yeah, and we also play, we ended up we ended up, we were, we were going to play for an hour and there's a curfew and we played for like two hours because we just couldn't stop <laughs> jamming. <laughs> and we were just like we weren't even playing the songs half the time. It was a pretty great show. Yeah, he usually pukes before the show and I usually puke yeah. after the show. I haven't done that for a while though. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Well, yeah. Pretty sure I've been working on it. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, Am I? Yeah. Are you still really? Yeah, I used to be, but not anymore. Yeah, no. Uh, probably, I mean, I don't know how much we can go into details. It depends, but... it depends what you define as party animal. If it's like, More than in, animal, if it's like yeah. intake, then he, you know, if it's like classic rock and roll party monster, then it's him. Uh, it's just like a walking pharmacy, basically. <laughs> Backstreet and regular. <clears throat> yeah. I'm cleaning up my act though. Um, and my shoes. <laughs> thanks. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I just cane it. I can cane it. For for somebody of my size, I, got, I can I can deal with a lot of things getting absorbed into my body. Yeah. I, I, I'm pretty I jealous I, of that actually. I don't know if I am though. Everyone hits it pretty hard. Walter has a kind of um, Walter just drinks all day. He yeah. sort of replaced his hemoglobin with beer. He's like a classic drinker, like an old man drinker. He just drinks solidly all day until he just falls over. Yeah. And then he gets up and starts again. Uh, yeah, I can like, I mean, when I get, it's not often, but like, cause I can usually deal with whatever things I'm doing. Um, but when I, when I lose control, it can get pretty, he gets <laughs> pretty, pretty dark side. Like the red eye. I remember, I don't know, there's like something happened in Chicago. I'm not sure what you, you had done to, make you that angry but he was like stopping traffic like in the middle of the road and like yeah. smashing bar stools and like saying he's gonna behead our merch guy yeah i had to apologize to our merch guy the next day um because i said that i was gonna chop his head off and he threatened to quit the tour so you got to think it was of, a dark day merch guys. it got pretty daniel day lewis that day yeah, yeah, that's the, yeah the end of there will be blood is pretty close to yeah <laughs> he's staggering down the stairs shooting things There's, a, oh, pre, there's, two, there's two nights I can instantly remember at the moment you asked that. One is Primavera, 
the, I never played that. Oh uh, no, what was it? Benicassim. Oh yeah. Benicassim, Spanish festival, whatever. And, um, yeah. and uh, it was just like a really great show. We played after Echo and the Bunnymen. We were last on our stage. It was beautiful, hot weather. Like, it was just, it was a beautiful night. And um, we went backstage basically and there was a pool and it, like no one else was around. I don't know why nobody else was around, but we had this pool to ourselves when we were in it with a bunch of friends, shitloads of booze, shitloads of drugs, and we were there till six in the morning, and it was just totally idyllic. It was like, it was just beautiful. Um, we had a pretty crazy night in Byron as well. Yeah. Byron Bay was pretty, it's it, weird. it was like a wormhole back into the 70s or something. So like whenever we're near water, then it gets pretty crazy. Yeah. The other one I was thinking about was the LA, LA pool. LA, yeah, the pool park. The, and then the hotel. We can't, so yeah. yeah. Can't go away too much. Yeah. It, what happened by we played it again, it was like, usually it's like if the show's really good, then it just sort of fuels us getting um, crazy. Um, but yeah, we just, we played a great show, and then there was a DJ after party thing, and then at about three in the morning, we invited that whole club down to the beach with us. And all I really remember of it is like, I mean, it must've been literally like 25 to 30 topless girls, some of them were totally nude, a lot of them half nude, Jimmy was, butt naked. I was in bed by this point. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Um, But yeah, and everyone was just basically skinny dipping, nude, just fucking wasted. And it was just, again, it was just like a beautiful experience with water. It was just totally idyllic. It felt, it just felt like something out of a kind of classic uh, 70s art, like, I don't know. Who knows, I wasn't there. <laughs> Actually, it wasn't there. Yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, you, know, you, you lost a tooth, you lost the front tooth. I knocked my tooth out. That one's fake. That one. Um, uh, that was at a house party, time. actually. With my own guitar, yeah, it was pretty annoying. So I like, kind of spat it out, and I, I made everyone look for it, but couldn't find it. And uh, you broke your toe. Yeah, I, I got angry. It's more like you, you injure, he injures more people than he injures himself. He brained some girl the other day with his guitar. He's got this metal guitar. He went through a bit of a crowd surf and tripped and just like impaled this girl's head on the end of his guitar. It was one of the, like, the, we had to do this big thing being like, oh, like, you know, someone got injured, you know, lawsuit alert. And then there's like this Facebook picture of her being like, cool show. Yeah, and it was like this like Facebook huge photo, cut on her forehead. It's just like, blood, like blood all over her top. Just yeah. being like, great show, thanks for a great evening. But you just been scarred. Yeah, that's what you realize. I felt bad about that. I don't mind taking chunks out of what I uh, sometimes I can take chunks out of Walter with the guitar. Not on purpose, but it happens. I mean, gotta be. Ja I mean, Japan's there's stalkers. Other than the stalkers, there is, which are just it's it, crazy. Um, by definition, Japan. We got like Total Life Forever beer made, or Total Beer Forever. Um, but Japan's alright. I mean, Japan's just. Weird. I mean, they're just like that. I mean, I mean, lovely people, but the fan side of things, they're just really intense. I think, like with What's fans, I think when it's when it gets like or... it gets to a level of intensity where it gets weird. Like normally, like like even like your, like your super fans are kind of quite cool, but then there's like the intense ones, and that's where it gets like I don't know. Yeah, it they can get, get like shaky creepy. and like I don't know. It's Cry, like heavy it's breathing. Like and like bits of skin flakes kind of just coming off. And yeah, it's like, it's not, you know. You know you're on, yeah. <laughs> yeah there's a couple of people that are like, you know, they're just like there at like every show and it's like, how are you doing this? We had a proper- Because like we'll get yeah. like the, you know, in Japan, we'll get like the bullet train and then they'll be there bef like before the bullet at the train. station. They'd say goodbye to us and then they'll be there at the other end like saying yeah. hello to us. Like, how are they doing this? There was one girl that followed us all around Europe and it was insane. We went like from Berlin to Madrid to like London to Paris and, and there was no contact with her other than that she'd be kind of hanging around at the after shows and also relentlessly messaging us. But um, every, every gig, like I remember just, you know, be like mid song and just kind of vaguely look out into the crowd and then there'd be this pair of eyes, <laughs> the same pair of eyes, just it's Berlin, it's Madrid, terrifying. Moscow, like Sao Paulo, just, it was, it was pretty scary. I think she wanted children. Um, I don't know. I remember in in Boston, there were like a couple of elderly fans, and the, the wife of this couple was stood right in front of me for the whole set with a really low cut top. Like touching? No, it was just it was like it was like oh my god, like every it was just there the whole you know just yeah. jiggling around. 
was disgusting. I mean, but anyway, that's, <laughs> that was quite weird. Um, There's got to be really... weirder stuff than an old woman with a low cut top. <laughs> that's, it's just popped in there. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. A lot of the time, to be honest, when we're playing live, it's like hard to discern what's going on. You can't on see through the red mist, anyway. Yeah. Oh, I, do I, woke, I woke up um, at a girl's house on tour. This is way back. Um, way back, like way back, <laughs> six months ago. <laughs> I, woke, I woke up. We were in Dublin. We had an early flight to New York, and um, <laughs> I woke up. This is just a sort of personal pattern. It's not necessarily that the place is that weird, but more just the situation. I just woke up, couldn't fucking remember anything. I just had one of those, you know, like wake up. It's like answer the telephone moment. Everything's totally black. You've got no idea where you are, who you are, like what you're meant to be doing, and then. All of a sudden, within like, it was one of those things where it starts off like slow mo and then clusters, and then I realised that I'm meant to be catching the plane with these guys to go to New York to play our first show in New York. I think it was yeah. like a really big deal, and I just didn't know where the fuck I was, and I was trapped in some girl's apartment, and I got, I, could, I just got locked out. She was in like a fenced, um, sort of housing apartment that you needed to have a key to be able to get out of it. It was like super secure, and I was there just like crushed, hungover, and I had. 40 minutes or whatever to get to get through to the checkout. And it was in a half an hour drive. Eventually I managed to break. I climbed over the I climbed over the fence, ran like ran along this road, hailed a cab, made him bomb it, got there, and I still would have missed the flight, but then I ran through to go through the metal detector and the guy had been at the show the night before. And he was a fan and he just like he just took me straight to the front and just fucking went. And that was the only reason why I caught the plane. That was it was like a pretty Benny Hill sort of moment. Uh, we had we had um, we played at Latitude Festival a couple of years ago, which is like a festival in the UK, and it's pretty it's like resolutely middle class sort of festival. It's like not known for being that crazy. And um, we had a good we had like a pretty late slot, and um, we came out and we played Blue Blood, and that was the first song in the set. And like eight bars into Blue Blood, the whole crowd just like collapsed, and it was like it looked like it was going to be. An absolute disaster. Like, like you could see people getting crushed and stuff, and they stopped the show. We were allowed to restart it later, but it was pretty. That show was pretty fucking insane. Yeah. So we had the show temporarily stopped. But I don't think we've ever been like shut down by the by, you mean by the filth. Some of the house parties, some of the house parties back in the day, none of them got shut down actually. None of them got shut down. But... Uh... Yeah, we've had, we've had run-ins with the cops. Yeah. What about the the guy that with the dog? The border, border cops. Border crossings. Yeah, they're pretty funny. We had um, <clears throat> the Anis had been, you know. We're never going to get let into any other fucking countries after we tell some of this. Anyway, there's you know, it's the bus was pretty stinky by the time it got to uh, Canada or America from Canada. Yeah, we'd been in California, and that's why we had like loads of sticky bud. And the guy had his dog, and he like he knew, you know, obviously because the whole place stunk of weed. The dog, the dog, was, going went, the dog was going berserk, and he just couldn't. He wouldn't let us go, but he couldn't find anything. And he was the angriest man I've ever seen. Yeah, he came over, and he was just like, and we were all just laughing, you know, <laughs> and like farting and laughing, and like you know, and he was just like, I will get you one day. Yeah. I will get you. It was, yeah. it was good. It's fun doing an interview where it's not like, oh, why, why are you guys called foals?